Okay guys, I am about 800 miles south of the border, Mexican border into Baja. And I pulled into this campground. I've been camping in the desert for a few nights, but I decided to pull into this campground because I wanted to use the internet. Good thing too, because my starter went out yesterday. We had to push start this bike to get it home last night, me and a buddy. And so here I am stuck down here with no starter. So what I'm gonna do is try taking this starter out right here, and I'm gonna walk to the other side of town and give it to this guy who rebuilds starters and have him put brushes in it and we'll see if that works it's going to be a twenty dollar gamble because that doesn't always work i've done that many times in the states usually i can do that once with a starter and by the and then it'll work like new again until the second time it goes then i need a new starter so right today i'm pulling this starter out of this bike and taking a walk okay here we are for this starter you got to pull open the primary up but my last one you had to pop the clutch off there we got my starter you gotta open the primary because you gotta get this bolt loose to get the starter out the other side. I don't know if you can see it, but it's gone. So I am going to hang that cover back on there, put everything back so I don't lose parts or nothing like that. Um, you lose a bolt that you needed and you got a big problem when you need it. So I'm gonna hang it all back together and then I gotta get that little starter and I gotta walk all the way across town. There's a guy who says he can put brushes in the starter for me. We'll see if that fixes it. If not, I gotta get one from the States. Not my first rodeo, broken down plenty of places, plenty of times, part of the game. Sooner or later, it'll get worked out. Okay, guys. It's a windy day and I got background noise, but I got to work with the conditions I got because this is real TV. <laughs> the real, real TV. You probably still know that I'm 800 miles south of the border. Uh, and my starter went out and it quit completely started screwing up in the morning by the evening it did absolutely nothing so what are you gonna do fortunately I happen to be in this campground I really like and so I decided I found a guy here that does starter rebuilds and I'm gonna talk a little bit about starters but not get totally into it so you can know what to do under a situation like this I've done this many many times so the starters an electric motor I mean, electric motors have these, they call them brushes, some of you know, some of you don't. And what they are is there are four pieces in there that have springs behind them that push them in. And there's a, uh, the armature in the middle spins and they push against it. Eventually they just wear down real thin, they're these little metal things. And they wear down thin and they get dirty and they just stop working. And more often than not, you can just have the ones in your motor replaced. I've gone to starter repair shops, starter alternator shops. Pulled my starter out in their yard, handed it to them, and waited until they had it done before, it, before, you know, at times, and then put it back in in the bike right in the parking lot. So I found a guy here that would do it, and I pulled it out here. And I'm not going to get into that. If you've got to do your own, you'll have to look at the manual or something. And I carried it two kilometers, about a mile and a half, down to his place. And I handed it to him. He hooked it on a battery right there, and sure enough, it did nothing. So that. That was day before yesterday, and then he called me yesterday afternoon, I went and got it, and he hooked it on the battery, and it seemed to be working fine. Okay, here's the thing about having brushes replaced. Well, it's generally a gamble. Um, and the guys will tell me, a lot of times they'll tell me, this will probably fix it, but if it doesn't, you still gotta pay me anyway, because I did the work. So you're gambling it. In the States, it's usually about 45 bucks. Here, it cost me the equivalent of about 21 bucks. So I know that. There's only one guy I ever ran into who knows how to test the armature in North Carolina. He took me back in his shop and showed me it's a real weird thing, but you generally just don't run into that. So you're gambling. So it's, we're gonna see if this thing is still strong enough once I put it in the bike to work. Now starter is actually two pieces. The motor is only this little thing right here, right? And then you got the solenoid here. And what the solenoid does is, is it's an electric switch. Okay, and if you look under your car or on your motorcycle, you get them two big heavy wires coming off the battery. Those wires only are for the starter. The starter pulls a lot of power. You can't put fuses in it. They put heavy wires that can carry a lot of juice without getting hot and catching fire. Um, and if you look, there's always a small wire coming off next to that that goes to the rest of the vehicle. So if you look at a kickstart motorcycle, they don't have them heavy wires on the battery, just little ones attached to it. So, how are you going to get them heavy wires up to the button on the handlebars or the key in your car or whatever? Well, they use an electric switch. And this is, that's a large part of a solenoid's job. I'm going to do some stuff to this solenoid and I'll show you. That's why I'm explaining this. 
So the power from the battery comes in here, but the motor is here. The little starter motor is here. Okay, you see the way this wire comes out the other side and goes into the starter motor. So this thing's job is to connect these two. It connects the power to the motor, bang, it engages it. That's part of its job. It does two things actually. Okay, and how that works is it has a little piston in it that moves when you put electricity into this little, this little connector right here. That's the one that actually goes to your handlebars. Okay, so when you hit that, it puts power here, turns on an electric magnet that's inside of this. The electric magnet moves a piston that goes kick, and it engages these two pieces. When you get in it, it's actually pretty simple looking. All right, and then the other thing it does, these starters this year, this is a 1991. I don't know how long they use these starters. I think they came out with them in 89, but they have a habit of this piece not working. And the problem is inside the starter, man inside the solenoid for some reason that's why these after company aftermarket companies made this button that manually pushes the piston so another part of its job so you push that pushes a gear out here that engages into the engine and then when you let off it pulls it back in so it does two things okay so this one this is useless i've had two different starters in this bike now and neither one of them is the fucking solenoid the button would work half the time and then it quit completely if the problem's in here i figured that out i'm not going to get into that so what also happens is the contacts that hook these two together, they get corroded and burned and kind of nasty. And I don't know, the guy did my motor, yeah, but I don't know that he got into my solenoid and cleaned it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up, which is easy, and I'm gonna take a look at it and see if, um, See if the contacts on it have been cleaned, and if not, I'm going to hit them with a file. And what do I got? Some scotch, some of that steel wool, and see if I can clean them up. Maybe a pocket knife. So it's a pretty simple deal. So usually, I've done this to so many starters, I can't remember them all. And usually, I can put brushes in it once, and by the second time it goes out, I need another starter. It can't be fixed again. Oh, the contacts look like shit. Okay. Let's see if I can show this to you. Okay, guys, I'm going to try to show you this. You can see right here is where the power comes in. And it goes to that metal plate right there. And then this one's on this side and it goes to that metal plate right there. See it? All right. So the two need to be connected in order to make this thing work. Well, what happens is this piston is inside of it. And see the way it's got this brass guy here? This brass ring? That just pushes in and connects the two. Right here. Okay. That gets pushed in and connects those two things. That's why that manual system works. And as you can see, they are still crusty and corroded. He did not clean them up, just as I suspected. I'm going to clean those contacts up myself. Now, I don't know if that came through in the pictures well or not, or in the video. So, but this is, this is Idiot with a Camera Productions. So when these contacts don't contact well, what will happen is your starter will act like your battery's low. When your starter starts acting like your battery's low, when you know your battery and your charging system's fine. I've known this for a while, it's starting to get slow. I just thought it would last longer than it did. But when, when you notice that happening, oh, that cleaned it up already. Then it generally means you need brushes. Maybe you need to clean these contacts. So, the guy was really busy. He probably didn't take the time to do this. Oh, look at that. I'm getting it nice and clean. Now, maybe you can see. I just cleaned the corrosion off of it is all. And it's clean. And the same with the contacts. I cleaned them up, too. It's a strange thing. But the drifter bites, especially those who have been doing it a while, 
These are some of the guys who do the most traveling and they have some of the most beat up, screwed up bikes. I took Joe Sparrow's Goldwing for a ride one year at Sturgis. I put a tire on it, I said, let me ride it. Things fucked up. So, but a lot of it gets that way, I think, because of stuff like this. I have a brand new starter sitting in New Orleans, but I can't get it here in Mexico too easily. Main problem is getting it through customs. Customs can hang me up for three weeks, or it may not get here at all, and there's nothing the shipper can do about that. If I was having it shipped from here in Mexico, I could go DSL and have it in a day or two. If somebody would have to bring it across the border for me, or I'd have to try to get one here. So, anyways, what we do is we fix our bikes with what we can, with where we are. Be great just to stick a brand new one in. This starter is the one that was in through those big engines. Those big engines are very hard on the starter. They are hard on everything. They were such a bad idea. Get to kick myself in the head. Ask for that one. Okay. I think that's probably tight enough for these. Oh shit. That was rather dumb. I forgot to put this piece in. Well, I never claimed to be all that smart. Okay. We got that in. And we get. Alright. Now, let's try this again. New brushes and clean contacts. <coughs> If you have one of these year starters and your button quits working, you need to get this aftermarket part. That is the fix. Dog. Bringing me his ball. He's one of those. All right, buddy. Here, give it to me. No, you gotta give it to me. All right, all right, all right. Ain't you cool looking. Get it before it goes under the fence. Okay, now, that's about as good as I'm going to get it. i got to put it back in the bike. We'll see if it works. But before I finish putting this bike back together, I want to be sure that starter works. So, there's no oil in the primary or anything yet. But if i got to take it back apart, I don't want to put it all together right now. So... I'm not going to tell you every little anal thing about starters, but of course, whenever you're working on one, the first thing you do is disconnect the power, the battery, because it pulls a lot of power, and you'll engage it while you're taking it apart, and it'll fuck things up. So let's see if it works. I'm going to push the button. Voila. It looks like I'm good. I'm going to finish putting it back together. Okay, I got oil in the primary now. Kind of buttoned up. Before I completely finish it, I want to hear it run, so we're going to see right now. You hear that starter? Sounds like it's brand new. Usually I can do that once and they're like they're new again. You hear it? It just cranks like a big dog. I'm going to put it back together and it's over. I can drive again and then we'll get a shower. I got some friends here. Some people, they got a camper. It's a couple. And we bought fish. So she got it. Halibut. A fisherman came in here and I put in like seven bucks. And they're going to cook a big fish dinner on this grill. That's what's supposed to be going on. We'll see what happens. Because... It's, a, it's Christmas Eve today, and um, we're just going to celebrate with each other because that's what we got. Also, I want to point out that I have included a donate button in the drop box below for all of those who would like to use it. And for you guys, I want to thank you because y'all are keeping me going these days. It's your gas that's in my tank right now, so thank you for bringing me here. <laughs> and for everybody who doesn't want to use it, no worries, man. I just hope it's... I hope you enjoy the content. It's always going to remain free and it's always going to remain real because I am never going to sell out. And um, with that, I hope to see you guys on the next video.